It's yeah. just a big weekend. You Don't know, fall asleep. You know when I love the grind? I know you won't. March 9th, that's when I love the grind. I would say your two favorite dates. In this video, I take a look at the Heathkit GR151A portable transistor radio, an early transistorized radio sold as a kit. The GR151A was one of a number of AM radios sold by Heathkit over the years. It was offered from 1965 to 1970 at a price of US $18.95 to $29.95 depending on the year. It was often sold bundled with a kit of tools that included a soldering iron, solder, wire cutter and stripper, screwdriver, plastic nut starter, and batteries. This was done as it was a suitable kit for someone with no prior kit building experience and that might not have had the required tools to assemble it. Some catalogs listed the toolkit separately and later catalogs didn't show it at all. The GR151A replaced the earlier GR151 that was sold in 1964. It's not clear what the differences were between the GR151 and GR151A. There were likely some small circuit changes, but I haven't been able to find a schematic for the GR151. In 1971, the GR151A was replaced with the GR151B, which was sold until at least 1974. The GR151B used the same circuit, but may have had some cosmetic differences, although they look identical in the catalog listings I've found. Early versions of the GR151A used a large 9-volt battery which became obsolete. Around 1967 they switched to a battery holder which accepted six standard C cells. For a time the holder was sold separately for owners who had an older model and wanted to modify it to accept the more common type of batteries. The unit was a kit that the user had to assemble. Thanks to Heathkit's detailed manual and the use of a printed circuit board and factory aligned coil and IF transformers, the radio could be built by someone with no prior experience in electronics and with no test equipment. Heathkit claimed an average of four to six hours to assemble it. This was a basic AM broadcast band radio in a leather case with handle. It was battery operated and had controls for volume on off and tuning. The manual claimed approximately 300 hours of use on a set of batteries. If this was accurate, you could run it for 8 hours a day for more than a month. It uses a built-in ferrite rod antenna. A 4 by 6 inch speaker produces good sound with up to 400 milliwatts of audio power. Looking inside, the circuitry is on a single printed circuit board which mounts on a metal bracket that holds the speaker and attaches to the case. The use of a circuit board reduced the labor and likelihood of assembly errors over using point-to-point -point wiring. Replacing the batteries required opening the case, removing two screws, and pulling out the chassis to get access to the battery holder. This was a little awkward, although you would typically get a few months of use with a set of batteries. The circuit's a pretty typical superhet design using six PNP transistors and three diodes. It used early germanium transistors, a 2N1526, two 2N1524, and three 2N408. Virtually all transistors today use silicon rather than germanium due to a number of advantages of silicon. In part because of the limitations of the early transistors, their circuitry to prevent overloading in addition to AVC and compensation in the final amplifier to adjust for changes in temperature and battery voltage. I bought this unit in February of 2024 from an eBay seller here in Ottawa, Canada. It came with an original manual, but the working status was unknown. It looked complete, but in somewhat rough shape, although to be expected for a radio almost 60 years old. The manual is complete, less the back cover and is dated 1966. The radio wasn't working when received. The battery holder was missing and there was some evidence that the batteries may have leaked at some point. 
One wire to the battery pack was present and the other was missing. There were some small tears in the speaker cone and an earphone jack had been added to the case but was not wired up to anything. The circuit board looked complete and in good shape with all parts present and appearing to be original. Powering it up produced some audio hum but no stations. I then noticed that it was missing one wire to the tuning capacitor. Further testing and visual inspection revealed that some of the tuning capacitor blades were shorting. Someone had apparently installed a mounting screw that was too long and it had pressed into some of the plates and bent them. I carefully straightened the plates. After doing this, adding the missing wire to the tuning cap and hooking it up to a 9-volt power supply, I could clearly pick up some local AM radio stations. Further restoration work included replacing the four electrolytic capacitors with new ones. I used tantalum caps as I had suitable ones on hand. There were no paper caps to replace and all of the resistors were close enough to the correct values to leave them. I ordered and wired in a suitable battery holder for six C cells. The manual said to cut a 2 by 6 inch piece of corrugated cardboard and place it between the holder and case, presumably to prevent shorting of the holder moving around. I did this. Finally, I performed the alignment as per the manual, which involves touching up the coil and IF transformers and doesn't require any test equipment. I did some light cleaning of the leather case using Murphy's oil soap and re-glued the speaker grill cloth, which was loose. I cleaned the knobs and glued the small tears in the speaker cone. The radio was now working well. I measured the current drain at 9 volts and moderate volume at about 13 milliamps. The radio operates down to about 4 volts. This was a basic portable AM radio with an attractive case and a decent sized speaker providing good sound and long battery life. It's a little hard to tune as there's no vernier so you only have half a turn of the tuning knob to cover the whole AM band but it's acceptable for AM broadcasts. The cost of $29.95 in 1965 is equivalent to a little over $200 as I record this in early 2024. The radio must have been used for some time as the case is well worn and someone had added an earphone jack. My guess is that at some point someone broke the radio by inserting the wrong screw when reassembling it and bending the capacitor blades. And the batteries may have leaked, so they threw out the battery holder and probably set the unit aside. The detailed manual describes the circuit operation as well as having a section on transistors, which were still quite a new technology when this radio was introduced. It's a testament to the early germanium transistors that they're still working after almost 60 years. I also own a Heathkit XR1, which was Heathkit's first transistor radio, and I've made a YouTube video about it as well. This was a well-performing radio that a non-technical person could build themselves from a kit, and it still works well as a basic AM radio today.